microscopic features of pericarditis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and syphilitic otitis through clinical case based discussion. Okay. Hmm. A 35 year old female who is in her own case of SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, since 7 years, presented to the medical emergency with external pain since 2 hours, dyspnea since 2 hours, and on history, the retrosternal pain was sharp in character, abrupt in onset, increased in intensity over the two hours, radiating to jaw, neck, shoulder, left side, left side, jaw, neck, shoulder, and trapezius, and which aggravated on lying supine and attenuated on bending forward. Attenuated was not the pain weakened on bending forward, and it gets increased in intensity on lying supine. So, what do we know by this history? What are the uh, most common causes of retrosternal pain? I'm waiting for the answers. Pericarditis. Okay, that's because the uh, discussion today is pericarditis. Okay, next. Anything else? Retrosternal pain. More common than pericarditis. Myocardial infection, yes, okay. GRD, yeah, that's down the list. Anything else? Okay. Chondrocostitis, yeah, that's a structural disease, which we called not a uh, retrosternal pain, but more of the sternal pain. Okay, angina, yeah, angina, MI, ischemic heart diseases. Okay, moving forward. On examination, temperature is raised, pulse is raised, BP is 100 by 60 mm mg. And heart uh, respiratory rate is raised and SpO2 is decreased. That's the inference we can see from the values here. And when examining the cardiovascular system, we see that S1 and S2 is soft, that is decreased in amplitude. There is no murmur. JVP is raised, that is, regular venous pressure is raised. Pericardial rub is absent. And pulses paradoxus is present. First of all, I would like to know. What kind of finding is a pulses paradoxus? What do you understand by pulses paradoxus? If it has not been discussed or you do not know anything about it, let me know also. I think this phenomena was discussed in your physiology first year. Okay, nonetheless, we'll rev uh, revise this. Pulses paradoxus is increased. No, no, it is decreased in BP, blood pressure, when uh, the person is inspiring. So that decrease, when it, uh, that decrease, the amount of decrease, when it uh, is more than 10 mm Hg, that is known as pulses paradoxus. I repeat, when the decrease or the drop in systolic blood pressure is more than 10 mg, uh, 10 mm uh, of mercury, during inspiration, that uh, phenomena is known as pulses paradoxus. It's a misnomer. It's not a pulse which is paradoxical. It is the systolic blood pressure drop, which is uh, paradoxical. So this pulses paradoxus, uh, it indicates towards few clinical uh, presentation or the few clinical settings in which it is uh, 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 present. That is, first is pericarditis. Next is cardiac tamponade. And another one is constrictive pericarditis or restrictive cardiomyopathy. These are the uh, 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 heart diseases which present with pulses paradoxes. Pericardial rub is absent. What uh, do we derive? What conclusion do we derive from this one? Pericardial rub is 
तरीका है जो रब इज एप्स नो पेरिकार्ड आइटम ओके ओके फाइन a pericardial rub is absent yes it means mostly means that there is no uh, no pericarditis but if the pericarditis is resulting in a uh, significant amount of serous secretion and thus causing a uh, pericardial effusion then also there will be absent pericardial rub so yes uh, usually it means uh, pericarditis is absent but when uh, the with uh, the pericarditis presenting with pericardial effusion they also result in decre- uh, in absence of pericardial rub jvp increase why am i pointing out this thing what does jugular venous pressure indicate jugular venous pressure is increased uh when the, the uh, right compartment of the heart that is right atrium and right ventricle have a back flow or there the increase there is increase in the pressure of these chambers then yes then we have increased jvp and most common cause of increased jvp is is yeah right ventricular failure Usta most common cause is also left ventricular failure. So everything starts from the left ventricular failure. It backlashes to the uh, it involves then left atrium, then the pulmonary vasculature, then the right atrium. So the most common cause or the failure or the uh, increased pressure in uh, left ventricle or atrium or the left uh, segment of the heart is increase uh, failure of left ventricle. राइट राइट वेंट्रिकल का फेलियर का मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल फेलियर ओके प्रोसीड फर्दर लेट्स प्रोसीड फर्दर दीज आर द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑन सिक्स सिक्स थ्री वी सी दैट द कार्डियक शेडो इज एन लार्ज एंड द कार्डियक थोरेसिक रेशियो इज इंक्रीज एंड द लंग फील आर नॉर्मल वट डज द कार्डियक शेडो and last means here what does this depict so either there is something cardiomyopathy something dilated cardiomyopathy or there is something around the normal cardiac shadow maybe usually the hypertrophic as discussed by dr nidhi in the prior lecture hypertrophic uh, heart does not show you the increased and last cardiac shadow on x ray that will discuss further so this actually just basically it depicts that there is something wrong with the card uh, uh, with the uh, heart either it's covering or the heart itself in ecg we see ecg is also depicted here in ecg we see that there is st elevation in all the chest vein so this is v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 so when there is st elevation in all the chest vein it also indicates towards pericarditis ठीक है एंड व्हेन वी डू द इको कार्डियोग्राफी और थ्री डी इको वी सी दैट देर इज अ पेरिकार्डियल इफ्यूजन सो दिस इज द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल इट इज लेबल एंड दिस इज इट्स वॉल एज यू कैन सी दिस कॉन्सेंट्रेट एंड देन वी सी अ स्पेस बिटवीन द विस्टरल पेरिकार्डियम एंड द पेराइटल पेरिकार्डियम दिस वी सी दिस इज द लाइन एंड दिस स्पेस इट इज इट हैज अ इफ्यूजन सो दिस इज पेरिकार्डियल इफ्यूजन विच वॉज डिटेक्टेड ऑन इको कार्डियोग्राफी so next is obviously the diagnosis diagnosis come on we are being discussing in 15 minutes diagnosis anyone pericarditis so what type of pericarditis yes it is acute in nature it uh, and accompanied with pericardial effusion and its cause was mostly secondary that is systemic lupus erythematosus the serious manifestation of sle most common manifestation of uh, 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 most common serious manifestation or cardiovascular manifestation of sle is pericarditis can you tell me other causes of pericarditis Okay. 
dilated cardiomyopathy is not a cause of okay tb yes i heard it next infections infections which infections particularly tb is one of them am i uh allergic bacteria okay okay fine the answers i have received is tb infections amyloidosis streptococcal pneumonia syphilis and pyogenic bacteria also neoplasm trauma cephalococcal okay radiation that's okay that's that's very nice so uh, uh if we categorize the causes of pericarditis it is mostly infective and non infective in infective we have uh, most commonly it is associated with viruses and uh, in viruses also it is quite uh, uh, good in amount in hiv HIV patients may the most common virus which co uh, which causes pericarditis is coxsackie, and uh, the bacterial bacterial be most com uh, bacterial causes of pericarditis most common is streptococcal pneumonia, other SARS aureus, and uh, the fungal the fungus which can cause acute pericarditis is histoplasmosis, and as we all know that Mycobacterium TB can also cause pericarditis. in non infective causes we have few hypersensitivity reaction like it is could be associated with rheumatic heart disease and uh, like in this case in this particular case it was associated with uh, autoimmune disease that is sle and uh, as uh, someone pointed out it was uh, uh, it can also present after mi that is as a part of a dressler syndrome Uh, Dressler syndrome. Does anyone know? Does anyone know the uh, the part or the components of Dressler syndrome? Was it covered in the? okay dressler syndrome which is also a uh, post mi syndrome which presents uh, around uh, 14 weeks after mi it presents with pyrexia pleuritis pneumonitis and pericarditis four teeth yes four teeth and it uh, uh, consists of pyrexia pleuritis pneumonitis and pericarditis good Uh, four teeth pyrexia pleuritis pneumonitis and pericarditis okay so let's proceed further okay uh, here we did a uh, pericardiosynthesis and uh, it had serious pericardial aspirate that is just a special investigation but uh, as we all know the diagnosis of heart diseases it's mostly clinical because uh, Uh, we do not need much of pathology or pathological intervention in diagnosing the uh, cardio uh, cardiovascular diseases it's mostly clinical so uh, but still we would like to uh, revise our uh, pathological findings so proceeding with gauss and microscopic features of pericarditis so these are the major types of pathological pericarditis gross appearances so it could be a serious pericarditis the gross you see is from our own museum here we see this inside is the heart normal shape and this is the fibrous pericardium covering of the heart and in between we have a space a ample amount of space that is serious pericarditis that is there is just a, a pericardial effusion of serious bleeding So, brittle pericarditis. This uh, uh, is another type of gross appearance of pericarditis. Hemorrhagic pericarditis and purulent pericarditis are other types. So, here what do we see? As I have already discussed this in previous one. Previous slide, I said we can see. What is the outer covering we can see here of the heart? So first of all, it's a wet mouth specimen of a of heart. 
which is cut open on its axis here you can see this axis okay it is between the uh, uh, right ventricle and the uh, uh, left ventricle so it's the uh, axis of the heart ke us pe hi iska cut open kiya gaya hai and here we see this is the fibrous capsule the outer thing fibrous uh, uh, fibrous pericardium which is also known as parietal pericardium and under this cave when you actually see the specimen face to face in the museum of mamsi there you will be able to appreciate the heart muscular organ inside it so here it is just enlarged pericardial cavity which has increased pericardial space between the uh, uh, parietal and visceral pericardium and the, the thickened parietal pericardium that's the only thing you can appreciate in the draw proceeding further this is the fibrinous pericardium what kind of appearance do we call it no it is not a fibrous pericardium it is fibrinous pericardium yes it has a particular name yes it's called a bread and butter appearance as you can see so why does it call uh, why do we call it bread and butter, butter appearance actually when two bread we put a butter in between them and when we try to retract them back when we try to separate the uh, uh, bread from each other after putting the butter between them then the appearance we see here here this appearance this is the appearance we appreciate in fibrinous pericarditis grossi so that's the explanation of fibrinous fibrinous pericarditis okay proceeding further this is the hemorrhagic pericarditis and here you can see the purulent pericarditis in pericardial phase when uh, uh, there is a uh, pus filling that is the purulent pericarditis and this is hemorrhagic pericarditis it is not from the textbook our textbook this is just from an article source and it is not available in our museum our museum only has this uh fibrinous pericardium this is the only uh pericarditis specimen we have moving further microscopic features of uh, uh of uh, fibrinous pericarditis is just showing the inflammation it just shows inflammation through the fibrous uh fibrous collagenous tissue and when it is uh, hemorrhagic there will be a uh, congestion and deposition of hemosiderin and uh, other blood clots associated to it if it is purulent there will be active inflammation uh, acute inflammation uh, composing of uh, uh, neutrophils and it can also have a background of chronic inflammation composing of lymphocytes and plasmas so that the microscopic features but the microscopic features we discuss in detail is uh, of uh, fibrinous pericarditis which shows fibrinous acute inflammation involving the pericardial layers that is just nothing but the uh, here we see this is the pericardium mostly the visceral pericardium which is in the, which is attached to the underlying my, uh, myocardium so these are the muscle bundles of the myocardium here you see the muscle bundles and this is the intervening inflammation if we go on higher power we can see that it could be uh, composed of uh, uh, acute inflammation and uh, chronic inflammation both so it uh, that type of inflammation we call as acute or chronic inflammation this here is the fibrous uh, 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 visceral visceral uh, pericardium here we see it's uh, uh, de uh, desiccated it's dried up and we we do not see a good intact layer this is all destroy, uh, destroyed by the acute inflammation moving further 
a 40 year old male presented to medical emergency with complaints of sympathy since 1 hour retrostrugal pain since 2 hour dyspnea since 4 hour on history retrostrugal pain had an abrupt onset it increased over the few hours it was not relieved on medication and it was radiating to the neck jaw left neck jaw shoulder and under border of the left arm and forearm in the past history he was recently diagnosed with uh, hypertension and uh, was still under workup the patient had complaints of palpitations early exhaustion early exhaustion on physical work since 2 to 3 years and these complaints were increasing gradually in the intensity and in the frequency of the episodes okay so what do we uh this is of some this clinical history cardio myopathy which type of cardio myopathy and why cardio myopathy रेटोस्टोनल पेन के तो और भी कॉजेज है हार्ट फेलियर यस इट्स अस इट्स अ ओके फाइन द आंसर आई एम रिसीविंग इज कार्डियोमायोपैथी हार्ट फेलियर और एम आई और हाइपोट्रोफिक कार्डियोमायोपैथी और लेफ्ट वेंचुसुलर हाइपोट्रोफी यस दीज ऑल they yes they go with this history so first of all the retrosternal pain and the syncope syncope why does syncope happen because there is left ventricular failure it cannot pump out the blood to the body which is required by the body to maintain its consciousness or the brain that's why the syncope or the episode of fainting happens dyspnea dyspnea is the first thing which happens that's because when it uh, the left ventricular failure starts it starts a uh, a uh, back pressure which is which uh, which involves the pulmonary vasculature and hence and hence and hence uh, there is uh, there is dyspnea moving further on examination so first of all the examination what do we see here on the screen what do we call this machine as and what are its components what does it show what are these three lines continuous line is showing what is this machine we have seen this machine in emergencies icus and medical setup okay this is known as an cardiogram that thing this is just a cardiogram a screen no electrocardiogram specifically yes it's a component of electrocardiogram so here we see this is the respiratory ray okay and the respiratory curve you will know about it in your medicine posting and this is the uh, this is the pulse pulse character this shows pulse character and this is the ecg so these three things you can see on the cardiogram that is the respiratory rate or the spo2 level then uh, other is the uh, 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 electrocardiogram and other is the pulse character so this is the cardiogram machine so first the patient is unconscious yes the patient was brought in syncope so yes he is unconscious his temperature is near normal his pulse rate is bradycardiac and he is collapsing further his uh, bp is also collapsing and his his uh, oxygen saturation right now is maintained but maybe even this will be collapsing on cardiovascular examination or auscultation we see that uh, his uh, first heart beat is stopped second heart beat has a split which is uh, which is suggestive of left ventricular failure uh, then we have a apex beat apex beat is also is a part of a palpation palpation exercise here we keep our uh, uh, 
hypothyroid muscles or a hypothyroid surface of the hand on the uh, anatomical location of the apex feet and we try uh, to feel the apex feet on uh, on our palm if the apex feet is tapping that is normal like of the tap of a finger on our palm and if this is very diffuse very diffuse like two three fingers tapping together then it uh, uh, indicate towards dilated cardiomyopathy but if this double thing comes that double tap like two fingers separately tapping on your uh, palm that is known as uh, double apex beat here we see an ejection murmur which is present and also the pulse character which we see here on the uh, cardiogram that pulse character is like a pointed finger pulse and the blood pressure is increased obviously due to the left ventricular pain so here this is the pulse character we will see on the cardiogram and it looks like a pointed finger you can make out so this is the pulse character this pulse character or bifid pulse or pointed uh, uh, finger pulse is characteristic of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy okay but to confirm it further we'll do further investigation his x-ray is normal why is his x-ray normal in the last case it was enlarged yes it was enlarged due to the pericardial effusion now it is normal but there is something seriously wrong with the patient and that to cardiovascular system that patient has been brought with uh, dyspnea resistant pain and syncope so the reason is so by uh, uh, normal cardiac shadow we make out that the car, the uh, uh, the heart it is not dilated okay and we have congested lung field uh, that's because to, uh, that's because of the failure of left ventricle back pressure a uh, congested lung field which uh, uh instead result in left vent uh, right ventricular failure and increased tubular venous pressure by ecg we see uh, st elevation in only b3 and b4 chest plate how is it different this st elevation different from the uh, st elevation in pericarditis or leap yes in pericarditis there is st elevation in all the leaves and here there is st elevation only in the left ventricular uh, lead the leads which are in proximity of left ventricular and even more specifically the septum the septum uh, interventricular interventricular septum okay so yes the uh, more uh, the characteristic finding of pericarditis was there is uh, st elevation in all the chest leads and here we have a uh, st elevation in v3 and v4 this alone this alone uh, clinical finding it depicts that there is a myocardial infarction in the interventricular septum if we take if we are not considering the history and all this particular just this line ecg st elevation in v3 v4 it only uh, signifies that there is a myocardial infarction in the interventricular septum but when this is taken into account with the history and the clinical uh, and the cardiovascular examination then we can say it is something related to the cardiomyopathy and uh, probably hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so in the echocardiography we see increased septal thickness increased left ventricular wall both posterior and left sided obstructed left ventricular flow outflow i mean and decreased uh, uh, right ventricular outflow okay so what is the diagnosis heart failure okay yes it's a part of a diagnosis very right heart failure is the part of the diagnosis hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so actually how do we proceed uh, whenever we uh, uh, try to diagnose a cardiovascular disease we proceed whether first of all it is uh, what kind of 
uh, heart disease is it ischemic heart disease is it myocardial heart disease is it pericardial heart disease is it ischemic hypertension okay or is it of valvular heart disease so first of all it is a myocardial heart disease then is it acquired or congenital this is a question sorry i could not put it is it acquired or congenital hypertrophic cardiomyopathy obstructive yes this is only genetic and autosomal dominant it is ad disorder okay yes it is only genetic always congenital and it has a this particular presentation and it is a cardiomyopathy what and all cardiomyopathy uh, has been excluded out by various uh, uh, histories or clinical examination here it was not dilated cardiomyopathy why not it was not dilated cardiomyopathy why not because the cardiac shadow in the x ray was normal echocardiography did not signify anything everything was uh, signifying towards hyper yes hypertrophic cardio echo echocardiography is the confirmatory investigation of myocardial heart disease and uh, uh, it was not even restricted cardiomyopathy because as i have said restricted cardiomyopathy it presents with pulsing paradoxes we did not see that clinical finding here did we okay great so yes it was a uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy here we see see first of all this is the normal heart and this is uh, actually cut open in the, your uh, sagittal section that's why you do not see left ventricle ke side mein right ventricle you see just the left ventricle and left uh, uh, atrium and the aorta so this is the dilated cardiomyopathy you can see the size difference between the normal heart and the dilated cardiomyopathy left atrium has increased in size left ventricle has increased in size and here hypertrophic cardiomyopathy may you see the outer side it remains normal there is no significant change in the overall size of the heart but yes the thickness of the wall that is increased so based on the thickness of the wall or the uh, uh, walls of uh, left ventricular uh, left ventricle involved in uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy we have symmetrical and asymmetrical hcm so what is the difference between symmetrical and asymmetrical hcm it was discussed by dr didi in her lecture no answer symmetrical and asymmetrical okay fine let me point it out for you asymmetrical hypercardio uh, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy involves only the septum interventricular septum and the symmetrical cardiomyopathy it involves the concentric wall of the left ventricle it involves the left uh, uh, wall of the heart the posterior uh, wall of the left ventricle and the anterior and including the septum that's why it is also known as a constricted uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy concentric concentric hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and last is restricted cardiomyopathy here we see what is the difference between this and the normal what do we see structurally we see nothing it's actually the systolic or the moving or the moving heart yes we see uh, uh yes atrial dilatation that's right uh, i was actually uh, more asking towards the uh, left ventricle do we see any difference with the left ventricle yes no yes it's just that, that there is a restrictive layer inside the myocardium of the left ventricle all uh, both the ventricles which uh, do not uh, uh, allow it 
to dilate and that's why it uh, what kind of this function does it produce systolic or diastolic function restrictive cardiomyopathy effects systolic or diastolic function question mark yes diastolic it does not let the myocardium uh, myocardium to relax that's right okay and next is proceeding further gross and microscopic features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy here what do we see i think this gross has been shown to you multiple times what do we see bachcho thick ventricular wall okay so what kind of section is this i want to know what is the uh, cut section axis of this specimen is it the dietal is it coronal what do you see yes this is a wet mount specimen of heart yes it is so is it coronal do you see septum i can order this data septum here this is a sagittal section Yes, this is a dietal section. Why? Because we cannot appreciate the beach me jo septum hota hai. Uske beach me. This is just the ventricle, uh, left ventricular wall. Iske upper it is observed. Mata uh, baaki specimen se observed ho gaya hai. Yahan pe left ventricle, left atrium hoga. Or yahan pe aorta ja rahi hai. Okay. So that is the dietal. So you have to explain ki aap kaun sa view dekh rahe ho. Aap kya dekh rahe ho? Uh, before jumping on the uh, diagnosis, so yes, we see hypertrophic left ventricle wa wall, and we see concentric hypertrophy. Okay, यहाँ पे अगर considering this the anterior wall, so this is the posterior wall, and the thickness is increased, and even the apex apex पे भी जो muscular wall है वो भी increased. ठीक है? तो अभी आगे चलते हैं. तो इंक्रीज थिकनेस ऑफ द सेटल वॉल इसमें नहीं दिखाई गई है बट इन अदर सेक्शन यू कैन एप्रिशिएट इट एंड देयर इज रिड्यूस राइट वेंट्रिकुलर कैविटी इफ इफ दैट दैट आई शो यू इन द फर्दर डायग्राम एंड देयर इज ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लेफ्ट लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर आउटफ्लो हाउ विल लर्न इन दिस वन सो दिस इज द सेक्शन ऑफ दिस इज आल्सो Uh, which section is this now can you appreciate the right uh, atrium and the left uh, left atrium separately right ventricle and uh, left ventricle separately so this is this section is coronal that's right this section is coronal because we can see uh, all the four section all the four uh, chambers of the heart okay so here what i read was see there is decrease in the left ventricular space there is also decrease or there is pushing of this increase uh, thickened the septa into the uh, right vein Uh, ventricular or uh, right ventricle all so so this is the banana shaped cavity of the of the let let the hypertrophic left section is this coronal section is this first of all this is a transverse section nothing okay just for transverse section so if we hum log we can see here we see a pale area or uh, impacted area when will this impact occur in myocardial impact of the left ventricle theek hai 
so uh, here we see one here also we see one yes this is just the incapsular area so uh, usually uh, uh, because the uh, muscles the uh, myocardium is hypertrophic it outgrows the vascular supply of the normal heart and hence uh, it uh, causes myocardial infarction of the ventricle and how does this uh, myo uh, myocardiopathy involves the outflow of the uh, left ventricle is if we focus on this particular uh, part of the uh, picture you will see the blood comes from here it has enough space to come inside but the uh, banana shaped uh, uh, restricted cavity of the uh, left ventricle allows only less blood to come and after that there is uh, even hindrance Uh, to the blood flow or the out outflow of the left ventricle to the aorta due to this thickened septa. Here, this arrow, this uh, depicts the obstruction in the blood flow. Okay, so in uh, in your histological findings, you will just see hypertrophied muscle bundles of the myocardium, which is just in a disarray. Uh, extreme hypertrophy. Uh, we'll see characteristic branching here. Do we see branching, branching? This is branching, branching, branching. And these are not like a lamina uh, arrangement of the myocardium. These are all haphazardly placed, bizarrely placed. There is a disarray, and we see a little bit of interstitial fibrosis, which is a constituent of that hypertrophy, and allows the branching of these muscles. So this is. the uh, histological features of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so proceeding with the next case scenario a 50 year old male presented to medical opd with complaints of chest pain since one week so this chest pain he endured it for one week so this is this was definitely not a abrupt onset it was something delicate radiating to neck and jaw and it was increasing gradually he the patient waited for one week to come take and take a consultation and uh, on the uh, on the history there was no past significant history and he is 50 year old day okay so temperature Is normal pulse is be a normal BP is also normal and respiratory rate is normal. So what is the cause of the chest pain? Can we rule out that the cause is not cardiovascular? No. It is radiating, yes, yes. It is radiating, so that's why we cannot rule out CVS. It has to have some connection to the CVS or maybe the other medial spinal structures because other structures like even TB gone focus or other uh, tumors which suppresses the uh, sympathetic chain uh, uh, in the medial spinal can also produce this type of radiation. Okay, so on CVS the auscultation S1 S2 was present. There was no murmur. There was no additional auscultatory sound. Everything seemed normal. But on X-ray, because since the pain was in chest, so X-ray is obviously to be done, and it showed normal heart shadows, lung fields were normal. But there was something linear calcification in the ascending aorta. Can we see it here? Do we appreciate this linear calcification? Is it seen? Okay, ECG was normal. Okay, ECG was normal, and on reinforcing, that means on asking the patient again, the patient revealed a history of ulcerative lesions on genitals, eighteen years back, which self-remitted over months, and no treatment was taken. So, what kind of history does this depict? A uh, ulcerative lesion in genital. What does this indicate? Yes, it indicates a stiffly. Okay, the fleece, and uh, what is the uh, this ulcerative lesion of the fleece called as? Shanker. That's right. It's called as shanker, 
and what are the stages of so please we know of we divide this syphilis which is a chronic disease if not treated by antibiotic yes oh yes i can see the primary syphilis secondary syphilis early syphilis late syphilis that's great tertiary syphilis okay so cvs or the cardiovascular syphilis is a part of secondary secondary okay okay yes and uh, and the neurosyphilis is a part of also secondary okay yes so moving further diagnosis as we made out was syphilitic otitis which is a very rare form of otitis disorder because uh, we have good amount of uh, uh, antibiotic that is penicillin or the alternative doxycycline to treat the syphilis and usually in these uh, era of uh, 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 we, uh, we, because we have many outreach programs uh, to uh, diagnose STDs and RTI, syphilis rarely goes untreated. Everybody takes the consultation early during the process, and this is treated very uh, effectively in the uh, primary stage is itself. So this is a right now in this developed world, it is a very A rare form of otic disorder or a, a, a cardiovascular disorder which involves aorta, and uh, it is a late. Uh, it is a presentation. It's a very rare presentation of a secondary or late syphilis. Okay, so what kind of serological test do we do for syphilis to diagnose syphilis? How do we divide? Okay, VDRL. What kind of test is a VDRL test? Is it triponemal or non-triponemal? It is non-specific. I get it. Okay, it is non-triponemal test. Okay, other triponemal test, serological test. Non-triponemal test. serological test is rpr what is the full form of rpr <laughs> i cannot find the full form of rpr no answer this is general i think it has been taught to you yes rapid plasma reagents right right okay And what are the types of triponemal serological tests we have? Okay, okay. This is quite like a big answer, so I will proceed further. Non-triponemal test has VDRL and RPR. Okay, and uh, triponemal tests are yes, as pointed out, this is. A fluorescent triponemal antibody absorber, okay? Uh, uh, triponemal palladium heme agglutination. These were also positive, okay? And we have a special stain for this C uh, palladium. What is it called? Some silver stain, I think. Silver stain. Okay, it is also for us. Starry Watson stain, silver Starry Watson stain. Okay, Starry Watson stain. Okay, so so uh, this is just to emphasize on the pathology of syphilitic otitis. So usually we have a normal ascending aorta, just the one intima. This is the lumen part. This is intima. We have media and we have external elastic membrane and we have a vessel which is providing. uh blood or the uh blood to this uh thick muscular uh vessel that is aorta which is known as vasa vesora so when there is seeding of triponemal palladium in the late stages of syphilis these are deposited here 
which uh, uh, introduces a uh, immune response and an inflammatory response which leads to calcific deposits and thickening of the uh, thickened intima there is thickening of adventitia and there is chronic infiltration in the uh, uh, tunica media so on the gross finding here we see a classic tree bark uh, barking like tree ka jaisa bark hota hai that is uska uh, uh, tree barking appearance tree bark appearance or for that matter uh, we see multiple gelatinous uh, plaques here these plaques they they are not very specific we have vertical furrows going on these all are a description of classical tree bark uh, uh, tree bark appearance somewhere we also see uh, there may be uh, uh, plaques which are yellow here this part yellowish plaques which is due to erythrosclerosis what is the cause of erythrosclerosis cause of erythrosclerosis abnormal non lamellar blood flow in the vessels causes erythrosclerosis so when there is these counters uh, there is uh, like infolding uh, of the uh, wall of the aorta it results in non lamellar flow of the blood and the blood hitting the aorta wall and thus causes uh, atherosclerosis okay so proceeding further this is the microscopic features which we discussed in the previous slides also that there is thickened intima uh, even uh, thickened adventitia of the aorta there is granulomatous inflammation and chronic inflammation what are the granulomatous cyclis is a type of a granulomatous disease okay so uh, the, the chronic inflammation of the syphilitic otitis includes lymphocytes plasma cells which involves all the layers of the myocardium and there is also demonstration of these t palladium why this is uh, why is the t palladium present in the aorta this is due to the seeding the seeding of the uh, t palladium in the late stage of the disease is due to untreated due to untreated primary syphilis okay and which is and this stage this stage here you see is silver sari watson stage sari watson stage okay any doubt anything you would like me to repeat any doubt i cannot see anything no doubt okay then i will conclude this lecture uh ma'am what is uh the defect in restrictive cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy as it says restrictive so it does not uh, first of all as you all pointed out it is a diastolic disorder or a systolic disorder it is restrictive it is a yes it is a diastolic disorder see there is also a disorder known as constrictive pericarditis why is it called constrictive क्योंकि कंस्ट्रक्टिव पेरिकार्डाइटिस ओके सी द द टर्म वी यूज हियर इज रेस्ट्रिक्टिव कार्डियो मायोपैथी इट डज नॉट अलाउ द मायोकार्डियम टू रिलैक्स properly so allows the proper filling of the ventricles when there is incomplete or decreased filling of the ventricles the uh, which happens in the diastolic phase of the heart 
that uh, that results in decreased cardiac output that's the main effect of restrictive cardiomyopathy and it causes our amyloidosis or it could be infiltrated by hemochromatosis or fibrosis or other causes like sarcoidosis okay and uh, in constrictive uh, pericarditis there is a systolic dysfunction that is it does not allow the myocardium to uh, uh, do the systolic function or the contraction properly okay so these two are very uh, contra contradictory terms we use on the different layers of the myocardium and pericardium okay any other doubt okay okay then then i will conclude it thank you so much